Let's take a look at some of the enhancements in this release of RSpec. First, we'll go to the nonlinear calibration screen. The code that does the statistics, the polynomial curve matching on this screen, has been improved. You'll find that the residuals and the RMS values are frequently much lower because the fit is better. And if you click on the RMS label, RSpec displays the polynomial factors for the curve fit. Now let's go to the linear calibration screen for a minute. I've already entered one point, and I'll add a check mark to the one point alignment box. There's another tutorial video from several years ago that shows how to use this feature. And let's pop up the elements window for hydrogen. So as we've seen in earlier releases, we can drag this slider left and right looking for a match between the blue reference lines and our red spectrum's features. Ah, there it is. This technique, it's no substitute for determining your setup's dispersion properly with the type A star, but it can be helpful at times. So far, nothing new here, right? Well, the change to this screen is that you can now click on these minimum and maximum fields to change their values. Why did I add this feature? Well, these days, some users are doing amazingly high-resolution slitless spectroscopy with a star analyzer as an objective grading in front of their small telescope or DSLR. You can take a look at some of the discussion on our online forum if you're interested in seeing more. These objective grading spectra can have dispersions that are less than 4 angstroms per pixel. So this 4 here was too large. And this 45 is a bit higher than is really useful. So by allowing you to edit these fields, the screen has a little bit more flexibility and it makes the range smaller, which means the slider can be positioned more smoothly. Do you notice anything new in the elements window here? Well, we have these two new buttons that change the font size. It turns out that some of us have older eyes and the small font was a problem. And just the opposite, some RSpec users wanted to make these fonts smaller so that more rows would be visible in the window. Okay, let's close this window. Let's turn on the color fill. So do you notice anything different about the color fill here? Well, let's pop up the color fill settings screen by clicking on this gear button. See this new checkbox? It's checked by default, and the spectrum color fill is uniform when it's checked. When I turn this off, the color goes back to the old style where the intensity of the color fill is affected by the features in the graph. Personally, I think the old one looks drab and dingy when compared to the new one. Whichever one you use is, of course, totally up to you. Okay, now there's something else new on the profile screen. Notice this Y-axis label. It turns out that when you share a screen capture of a profile with someone who's not familiar with spectroscopy, they actually want to know what the y-axis is. <laughs> Who would have expected that? So on the appearance screen, on the graph tab, you can now fill in a label for the y-axis. Now, as you know, there are two ways to save an image of the profile region. You can use the file menu to export to an image file, or you can click on this toolbar button to copy the image to the clipboard. I'll do that. And now let's look at the image when I paste it from the clipboard into Microsoft Word. Starting in this release, if an image is calibrated, RSpec by default displays the angstroms per pixel value here. When you post an image to the forum, for example, or email it to somebody, it can be really helpful for them to know the dispersion of your instrument when they're looking at the spectrum. And if some reason you want to turn this off, you can do so on the main settings screen. Here. Here's another new feature. Let's turn on the measure lines. Here's the scenario. You want to display all of your profiles at the same zoom level. Well, these numbers here show the current position of the measure lines, and they've always been there. When I click on the numbers, I can now type in the position of the measure lines, maybe at 3,500 and 7,500. So that's also been there for some time. So now that the measure lines are positioned, the wavelengths are shown where those numbers were. Now I can click on this new button. RSpec will zoom the view to the wavelengths I entered. Then you could click on the crop button to save it, or of course save it to a file. 
Finally, I can save these numbers that I use to position the measure lines to use them another day by clicking on them and then selecting Save. That's been there for a while too. Then anytime in the future, I can click here to show and select them. By the way, if you hold the Shift key down when you click on a list like this, RSpec will ask you if you want to clear the list, like this. The same Shift click works on the Open button, like this one and this one. So now let's look at the background feature for a moment. This checkbox turns it on, and this box lets you select a current custom region. I'm going to select the blue region here. Okay, that's all old news. But now let's pop up the zoom window. As always, these buttons allow you to fine tune the position of the orange lines. But in the past, even if you selected the blue or the green background region, these buttons still only move the orange lines. That's been fixed now. So now if you select the blue region, for example, and then click on these move buttons, the blue lines move. This, of course, allows you to fine tune the background region, perhaps eliminating some stars that were intervening. This update also includes some nice new features for examining the RGB color channels individually. There are other videos that will show you how to do that. Whether you're a new user to RSpec or whether you've been using it for 10 years like some of you, I want to thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. Stay safe.